to do maybe or something like that. Howard, so it's the exciting to get some more awards. I guess then. Graduation. Yeah, because I, I was kidding. Yeah, because 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 I said, you weren't supposed to tell that. That's his that's weekend. weekend. Well, I'm going to work. I told him, I said, I'm I want to be sure you're right. right. Said, my gosh, everybody. <laughs> Ours, I said, Ours is going to my dog. My friend said, and when they don't see my holler, I went, I said, <laughs> oh, 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 Good for you, Marianne. <laughs> so I want to make sure people meet oh, you. Oh, I was there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like those hats. Chip, if you put them fancy. up at this end. Oh, it's after seven. Hello? There you go. Oh, we're on. <laughs> and good afternoon. Good afternoon. We've been busy since We've been busy jabbering. <laughs> so now we're back on what's new. Oh, we so were on it. Right. Who? <laughs> We're on, we were on, I saw us and then you didn't zone on me that we were already on. So you guys heard us setting up, so that's good. Okay, tonight we have Gary Schnell, is that it? Shell. Shell, sorry. That's all right. He's talking about the Civil War. And He's he not one. Bob Mueller. That's right. No, that's not Bob Mueller, I can tell. Yeah, he looks different than Bob. Yeah, I'm a lot better yeah. looking than Bob. Similar. <laughs> And we have uh, Mary Pure with the Art Guild, and we have Chip Marzuko with the Down Syndrome. And I think Lance Bonard's going to pop in in a little while when he gets off work. And he's got some exciting news, too. So do you want to start? Tell us all. Well, let them go, and then I'll just... Anybody wants to pop in? Okay, ahead, I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you start. Ready, sir. Someone needs to, right? Uh, uh, I'm... We're going to be talking tonight about the Art Yells project coming up in June. We're celebrating the 80th anniversary of the Summer School of Art in St. Genevieve. And the Summer School of Art developed out of the art colony that was set up here in 1932 and attracted such famous artists as Thomas Hart Benton, Joe Jones. And there were three artists from the St. Louis Artists Guild who had been going to Provincetown, Massachusetts for their summer school of art. And because it was right close after the Depression, they found it cost prohibitive to travel out there to do it. And so they loved St. Genevieve. They had been down to see the art colony and see the artists that worked down here. And they s decided to start a summer school of art here. And that was Jesse Beard Rickley and um, let me get all these names straight. Maybe Iris can help me get a brain freeze. But she was one of the main ones. And um, Amy Schweig. And uh, she was very closely connected with the art colony in St. Genevieve. And Bernard Peters was also, I'm sure some of you have heard of him. But anyway, they decided to start the summer school. And that was in 1934. And we're celebrating that 80-year anniversary now by having another summer school of art. And along with the classes that are going on, we're also having other events. And it goes for three weekends, opening on the 13th of June, Friday the 13th. And we're going to have forums each weekend. They will take place at the Shaw House, which was the home for the summer school of art. That's where they had their classes. And so uh, starting out with a, an exhibit of Matt Ziegler's work. He was one of the students at the summer school. We also had something happen, which I'm not sure how we're going to be using here, but one of my friends since I've lived in St. Genevieve is Teresa Drury. She was a model for the summer school of art when she was eight years old. 
There were, Mem Dempsey was also a model too, but we had now, uh, Teresa, 80 years later, we were hoping to have her be a model again, but it turns out when we needed the model, she's going to be in Washington, D.C., <laughs> <laughs> so she won't be here for that time. But anyway, we hope to have her in some of our press interviews and so forth is telling about her experience as a model in the summer school. She said, used to be, they'd keep us out there and it would get so hot, and then we'd move to the shade and they'd <laughs> paint us in the shade. And she said, my mom always said, I want one of those paintings. And she said, we never did get one, so they never did have a painting of her, <laughs> which was a shame. But so anyway. She didn't get paid for her work then, No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway, um, there's going to be um, Julie Dunmorton from the Mercantile Library, which has a collection of the works of the art colony, is going to be here that evening doing a, a forum and talking about the art colony and their works. And on the 14th, we're having Billy o. O'Donnell, who did the book Painting in Missouri. It's, he's a plein air artist, and he went to every county in Missouri over a seven-year period and did paintings. And Karen Glines from St. Louis, that's our contact with the St. Louis Artists Guild, did the editorial part of his book. And he will be conducting a, a demonstration a class. Then on um, the 15th, there'll be a show of the work that the students do that um, from his class. The following weekend, on the 20th of June, that's also Friday, the Art Guild has rented the ferry. We always have a summer solstice paint out and we had intended at first when we had this thought that we would get on the ferry and go down the river and paint. But then we decided, well, maybe that might cause a little spillage on the ferry with turpentine and oil paints and so forth. So we're going to have our paint out on the landing and then get on the ferry. And anyone is welcome to come on the ferry with us. And uh, we have a limit of 60 people, I guess. Crown Valley Winery is supplying the wine for the trip, and uh, Stella and me is providing the food. So it'll be a lovely experience from 6 to 9 on the 20th. Tickets are $30 for Art Guild members and members of the uh, working in this uh, anniversary celebration, and $50 for anyone else, but anyone is invited. Then on the 21st, Dan Woodward is a watercolorist, and he is uh, best known for his work of painting Civil War reenactments. In fact, he's going to stay with Gary and Mary yeah, and have Gary a chance that Gary will be interested in his work. He has, has done a book, and we had hoped to have it available for this, but there's run into some snags and it won't be quite ready for the... Uh, celebration, but anyway, he's uh, he's very very talented. He's going to do a watercolor workshop, and then the following day, of course, there will be a show of those works. And the final weekend, Friday the twenty oh the forum that that night will be on the twenty first Saturday will be art and politics. Professor Jim Wilson from Mac is going to do that, and. Um, it's uh, going to be uh, interesting because at the time of the art colony, there was quite a stir that these regionalist artists were very influenced by politics. And one thing Joe Jones did while he was here was get the union started at the lime kiln. And it caused quite a, an uproar in town. <laughs> So that we thought that was appropriate. Uh, Jim had some experience with uh, politics influencing art while he was uh, working in New York City. So he'll have some interesting things to talk about. Then on uh, June 28th, uh, Brian Haynes, I don't know if any of you have been out to Chalmette and seen the murals out there, they were done by Brian Haynes. He does huge works and he, he has a book called Neo-Regionalism. 
And so he does much of the style of Thomas Hart Benton and some of those regionalist painters that were here in St. Genevieve. He will be doing a class in the uh, portraying the human figure. And that uh, Saturday night, the forum will be the St. Louis St. Genevieve Art Connection. And we have uh, a member of the board of the St. Louis Art Guild, Catherine Navarsky, and Bonnie Rasmussen, who, uh, as a young girl, was awarded a prize for her art by Amy Schweig's husband. So she she knows the Schweig family. So anyway, it's, there's a lot going on, and everything is free other than the ferry boat ride and the workshops. Everything else is free for anyone who would like to come. I hope we'll have a good turnout. Mary, is there any of uh, the, the two that okay. the paintings the from the yeah, colony? That, no, that, um, I can't even think of a first name now. Mrs. Drury. Oh, oh that Teresa. 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 No, but we do have uh, the opportunity to have one on um, display that has Mem Dempsey dressed in a nun's habit. Her daughter has that painting. Oh, and I see. So, uh, but Teresa never. Teresa she, does not know, know of any. any of them. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. That's a shame. It yes, really is. Yes. Uh -huh. No, we don't. It could be that uh, in some of the collections that they bring. There might be that she would yeah find she might be in one and another thing I forgot to mention because it just came up last night uh, Bob Mueller is going to do a presentation about the murals that were done here by members of the I think all colony. over the all of uh, this area yeah no and all you know, of the uh, post office that he's yes had. yes. That, they're in Kansas and, uh, and every, I mean, they're in a lot of states, too. Well, he yeah. has that information, and that's going to be presented at the uh, Welcome Center. I think he said there were 16, the, 16 murals. That yes. He, that the, the that'll be on the 27th, the night of the art walk. He's going to be doing yeah, that. Yeah, to start all this event, we do have an opening. We have reception. an opening reception, mm -hmm. reception on the 13th Okay, that's at what I'm the Shaw to House. Um, yes. So, and that's when we have the Matt Ziegler exhibit. And that would start at 637? I think it's six. earlier than that. Um, I don't have a time. That's on Friday. Oh, 6 to 9, it six says. 6 to 9. Yeah, it's Matt Ziegler. Yeah. 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 That sounds like it's a full good three weeks going. It is. It's going to be, it's a lot of activities. It's a lot of and work. three weeks of graduation. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. get um, the paint? Oh, with Kenzie? Is she going to do that too? That's going to be in the plein air in the fall. Oh, that'll be in the yeah. fall. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have a few uh, brochures. If anybody what time does that reception start? Six to nine. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Six? Yeah. Six? Yeah. Okay. Six to nine. Okay. I'm put that down. Yeah, we're very pleased. Uh, St. Genevieve County uh, foundation has given us a grant as well as the Missouri Arts Council so to help us out so everybody in town come on yes got three weekends to celebrate art and <laughs> in of course, June, all of June the actually. French uh, festival is going to be going on the Saturday the of the first yeah. first weekend and uh, where um, Billy O'Donnell does plein air work, and I'm sure he's going to take the people out to paint some of the people in costume. The first done. weekend, and is then there'll seven? be yeah. no. The, no, the no. 13th this is, it starts, and the 14th yeah. is the Billy 14th, that's O'Donnell. Exactly. And then some of the French artists country. are going to have booths out in the street too. Uh, Lisa Palmer make does. Uh, I forget what you call it. Quilling. Quilling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She does quilling with paper, art with paper. She is very, very talented, and the more she does, the better she gets at it. Yeah. So that's interesting. I well, like she was there last year too. She had a setup because she even had to get electricity because she had so many people around that she had stayed at night, and they were they found her light so she could keep going. So her work yeah. is really, really interesting, and she's going to do demos and sell yeah. her work. 
They were encouraging artists to do that last night mm -hmm. to pick up out at the French Festival. Yeah, I think nice. there were three that signed up. Good, I think good. that's what I saw on Diane's paper. Yeah. So, everybody, come on out in June, any weekend. And during, uh, during the week, I guess uh, there's not too much going on then, or it's, uh, no, it's just weekends. Just the weekends, so. okay. So anybody wants to ride the ferry? Fifty bucks to get wine and food. Yes, and three, three, hours. Hours. <laughs> three hours. Three hours. Three-hour trip it would be like uh, Gilligan's Island or yeah. something. <laughs> it'll be. It'll be great fun. <laughs> I'm sitting there looking at those hats. I keep thinking Marianne should put one of them on. I think so, too. <laughs> Come on, Marianne, try one out. Here. I think they're Come. neat. <laughs> I love that one that's tall. I think that's so cool. Who wore that? That had to be the boss. No, actually, it uh, was known as uh, First Wisconsin is one of the, the most known for wearing it. They were called the Black Hat Brigade, or Black Hat. They were part of the Black Hat Brigade. Uh -huh. It's a it's an infantry it's an infantry uh, hat. So each one had their own design. Well, sometimes, yeah. That's why there's so many different hats. So this uh -huh. is called a Hardy hat, but General Hardy was the one who who uh, invented it. But General Hardy became a Confederate general, so it was part of the Union uh, military uh, headgears. So the the soldiers, because they didn't like General Hardy because he was fighting for the Confederacy. Uh, they call them the Black Hat, so they were called the Black Hat Brigade. But commonly, the First Wisconsin is, or the Iron Brigade is, is known for wearing this type of hat. That's a classic hat. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really a cool hat. I like that. Yeah, this is. A, I just okay. brought them to show you the different kind of hats that. Yeah. Were, were so, worn. do you want to go next, or Chip want to? Go ahead. You, you're talking about yeah. hats and stuff. Go right ahead and keep walking into it. Okay, that'll be great. You're gonna give me 15 minutes. Anyway. You can talk as long as you want. If you well, want, no. would you want to go longer? Well, go ahead. Well, I hear about the rest of the hats. Or else we can time. You ready? Set. Go. Go. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, well, this here is the most common. This is an infantry symbol during the Civil War. I was just gonna ask you about that. Yeah, and uh, you can go like to certain areas and buy, you know, these kids' hats, and they got the cross rifles on them. Oh. But they call them Civil War hats, but the cross rifles didn't come into being until about 1874. But before that date, infantry used this symbol because it was a pattern after the, the French Army uh, emblem for infantry, which was the French horn. This is just called a uh, slouch hat. A what? Slouch. Oh, slouch. That term. Yeah. Like you're slouching around. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that would be a good one for you. <laughs> <laughs> and this this here is called a kip. I gotta get a couple of a kip. Kip. Kippy. Kippy. Yeah, and this is actually the 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 ancestor or the forebear of what we call a baseball cap today. This is what the baseball caps were modern after. Oh my! Again, this is another French uh, cap, uh, kind of French design. And so the U.S. Army was in love with the France uh, military. And this is called a. Uh, An accordion. <laughs> that's, a, like that. that's a flop hat. Well, it's, called, it's called, you know, it's called a bummer hat cap. It's called a bummer cap, and the reason they called it a bummer cap is because the bummers in this during the Civil War were the ones that went around and uh, would come into your house and and take your food. Like you would be sitting around the table eating. And uh, they didn't have anything to eat. They'd come in and take your food. They'd go into your smokehouse, into your garden, and just strip your, it, oh. and strip your yeah. land bare. But this thing, this thing here, will 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 hold a dozen eggs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so it's called a bummer hat because the bummers were usually the that's the slang they had for the guys that went out and gathered supplies in the country for for the army. But I tried it one time, and it did. Well, I got a big head anyway, but it, I tried it one time, and it did. It held a, it held a dozen yeah, eggs. It held, held the eggs, and then you put it on, and they all well, no, on. You couldn't put it on. <laughs> no? But you could walk down the road carrying it without worrying about dropping a, you know, dropping a. Uh, I guess eggs. we shouldn't be making fun while you're talking. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And uh, you know it's uh, 78 in there. I don't know if you know it, but. I but, did. I was okay. going to ask you. Well, we, I belong to the Sons of Union Veterans of Civil War group, you know, the, it's Bob Mueller's group, you know, Bob was supposed to be here, but he didn't <laughs> 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 
<laughs> but he was here two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> but we have a we uh, we have a, a group called the Sons of Veterans Reserve, and and we dress up in Civil War uniforms, and we picked the 78th and Royal Missouri Militia because they were founded mostly. <coughs> most of the members of the 78th and Royal Missouri Militia were from the San Genevieve County area, oh, right. and that's and that's why we took that unit. We had various units, you know, where uh, the 47th Missouri Company K was from uh, St. Genevieve, and these are all Union regiments. Uh, we, had a, we had a company of Confederate Cavalry, Company E, 2nd Missouri Cavalry, uh, Confederate States Army, was, uh, was from most of them, or a lot of them were from St. Genevieve, and they were commanded by uh, a Lieutenant Chadwell. Like Chadwell Lane over here. Oh, okay. and so Lovers Lane. <laughs> well, I would know about that. <laughs> but, but yeah, but Chad Chadwell Lane. But he was he was from San Genevieve. And so this, both Union and Confederates we were here. Did the they union. get along? Probably not. No. <laughs> There's an article we found in a newspaper about some uh, some uh, in the tavern here in town after the Civil War. There was a couple of, uh, there was an altercation between three or four Confederate veterans and one Union veteran and uh, from what I understand in the paper that pretty soon all the Union boys that had fought in the Union Army came to his assistance and ran the Confederates out of town so but that's that was after that was pretty much after the Civil War so there was hmm. still some you know, I always figured the guy that the Union, was you know, the, state. I always figured the Union guy was kind of mouthing off or something, you know. And, <laughs> You're probably right. Well, that's what I figured. And especially if it was a tavern. Yeah, yeah. and he was probably German too, you know. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm, my answer. This here is a, a paper cartridge, and that's what they used during the Civil oh, War. Uh, and what they would do is they would stick this end in their mouth and tear it open and then pour the gunpowder and then it's got a mini ball in it. And uh, I'll pass that around if y'all want to look at it. And they come in packages of 10 like this. And so the guys would carry them in their cartridge box. They would carry 40 of them, 10, 20 of them open like that and 20 of them in the packages of 10 in the bottom part of it. Oh my gosh. But the funny thing I think is kind of neat is because at the start of the Civil War, if you didn't have your two front teeth, you, if you were missing any of your front teeth, your oh four gosh, front teeth, you, they wouldn't let you enlist because they figured, you know, you tear you open, wouldn't oh. you wouldn't be able to tear open the cartridge. Well, what they found out later was that, you know, most of the guys were tearing it on the side of their mouth anyway. So then they started, when they started, you know, started the draft in 1864, they went ahead and started drafting these guys. But it goes back to like in my day, you know, when, during the draft, the ideal classification was 4F. Uh -huh. And that goes back to the Civil War, which stood for four front teeth. Oh, my God. And so, you I know, and it goes back to so that's where the 4F yeah. in the draft back in the 1960s. Is that what right? happened? That's well, well, my dad was in 4F, but he was a teacher oh, and hang out there. there. No, he did yeah. it in there. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's about. This here is a, this was, this is the original Civil War bullet that was dug up, and uh, it it's a 58 caliber, and so I'm going to go ahead and pass that around. Now this St. Louis Arsenal, is that, that was during World War II, too, no, well, yeah, also, wasn't but it? it? Yeah, but Because I know a lady that worked yeah, there. Yeah. I worked with her. Well, there was a big ammunition plant up on Goodfellow, and I don't think the Arsenal really did that Isn't much that as far as uh, making ammunition, but oh. during... At the start of the Civil War and during the Civil War, the San Luis Arsenal's arsenal stored and made ammunition. So, is this what was in the paper? That is what the was ball. in the top of that paper. Yeah, That's called God. a three three ring mini ball. Yeah. It, it was in if you look, and this here is is the same. Well, actually, this is a 69 caliber. It's a little bit bigger than that. But you, if you notice, it ain't kind of perfectly round like that other one is. And when I give presentation, I go talk to school groups and stuff, or whoever will listen to me. But 
Yeah. Yeah. With our bed and breakfast, Mary says sometimes them guys feel trapped. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they can't get away from. Yeah. Them. <laughs> if they want to eat, the start if the they want to eat, yeah. <laughs> if they want to eat. But if you notice, it, it's a little bit misshapen. Well, it's yeah, a ricochet. It's been used. It's oh, been okay. shot. And that one there's more of a drop yeah. when it's more in good yeah. condition. But what happens when I talk to school kids is I, I tell them I say, okay, how come that one's all distorted? Could this kill you? Oh yeah. Oh, yes. It's a 58 yeah. caliber. Mm -hmm. That don't mean nothing to me. Yeah. Well, people <laughs> people get killed with a 22 caliber. So yeah. I figure it's but about 30. You can kill somebody with a 22. If you hit them in the right spot, yeah. yes, ma'am. 58 is pretty powerful. I thought that's what you kill little rabbits with. Well, yeah, <laughs> you can. But if you hit somebody with the right spot with a 22, you. Now, can. how much is a pack like that? How much? I mean. How much in money? Uh, you mean like today if we were to buy yeah. them? We can buy them for about 20 bucks. Okay, how much were they back? I, I have no idea. Oh. Because they come in cart crates of a thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is a But rock. you said that bullet no, was at the that, top of that's that. That's a bullet. bullet at the top of What's that. at the bottom? You can see the little marks if you look powder. careful. Gun powder, yes ma'am. Okay, so see that's at the top and they pull that off and use that bullet and then they use the... Well, they put the gun powder in first. Oh, okay. That's the one that and then they put the... And then they put the... And that's why, you know, like, uh, uh, put the bullet in after the gun powder. We okay. went to the Civil War Museum down in Atlanta. Have you ever been in there? Yes ma'am. That's mean, that stuff they used. My goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they had big balls like Boy, that. Mean. Well, here, look and at this. Let's hear this. Yeah, those things. Let's hear this piece of grape shot or cancer. They shoot well, them at I'll tell you about that one bullet before you got oh, okay. me off my yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Was I talked to these school kids, and I said, what would make, because one of those bullets would fly through there, hit you in the arm here. And you could shatter. break your arm. Well, yeah, it would shatter it. It would just literally shatter an inch and a half to two inches of your bone. That's why there were so many amputations. Oh, my God. But I asked the kids what causes, because these are solid lead, even though they're hard as a rock, they're solid lead. So what would cause these to get soft, that when they hit you, that it would flatten out or distort like that one did? And some once in a while, they'll actually know. They'll say, well, it's lead, which flying through the air causes friction, friction and therefore makes it soft mm -hmm. enough that when it does hit you, it flattens out. So, but this here is a piece of, uh, called uh, grape shot or canister. From a cannon. Fire from a cannon is fired, this is a two pounds, two inches in diameter and there's usually between 10 to 12 of these in a, almost a coffee can size thing. But uh, it's pretty Holy heavy, man. and uh, <laughs> that and when I talk, <laughs> when I talk, when I talk to the kids, I pass that around, and that one was actually dug up at the Battle of Hoosall or oh, Hoosall really? Valley. Uh, but when I talk to kids, oh say, my gosh, how many y'all ever played baseball or softball? You know, and they all go, most of them raise their hands. So, have you ever been hit by the ball? And most of them go, yeah. And then I'll pass that around. So I said, think about that, that piece of cannonball right there. When it hits, like the army fought in ranks, okay, there was one rank, then about three feet back was another rank, then about 15 feet was another rank, and I said, it would go completely through the first rank, the person, hit him in the chest, go completely through him, go completely through the guy in the second rank, and then wound the guy in the third rank. Mm -hmm. And if you ever watch the movie Gettysburg, which is probably the best demonstration when they're when you see them fire this cannon and 10 or 20 of these guys fall down at the same time and you're wondering how come so many guys fall down, well that's what they're getting hit with. Now this would come in 10 to 12 in a, in a container, but the thing of it is when, you got real, when the enemy got real close they did a thing called double shot. In other words, they would put two of those packages in there and fire both of them. So instead of having 10 to 20, they would have anywhere from 20 to 40 of these cannonballs coming out like buckshot mm -hmm. out of a cannon. And that's why when they fire these kids, and the thing that always amazes me when you read the stuff, these guys, these veterans like at Gettysburg, <clears throat> they're marching towards these cannons mm -hmm. knowing that's what's coming yeah, at them, yeah. right. you know? And I'm just yeah. going, is that bravery? Just being nuts. There were some down there that big, too. Oh, yeah. They're different sizes. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I couldn't believe that there, they would there, shoot there's those There's cannonballs. 
uh, like there's 24 pound cannons and then the they're shooting at 24. Actually, this is a piece of a 24 pound cannonball, just a small piece of it. These are, these little things here that look like little rocks and stuff, they are pellets that were on the inside. And these had a, these were fired out of a 24 pound cannon over at Pilot Knob at the Battle of Fort Davidson. And what they do is them little BB type things, or not BB, but little pellets, mm -hmm. they were inside of it and they had gunpowder and they would fire it and they had a fuse. Well then the act of firing the cannonball, it lit the fuse and the fuse was time to explode. And when the cannonball exploded with these little B, these little pellets inside of it, it was spread out. Oh my God. And so that's, you know. They have a reenactment over there every year, don't they? No, they have one every three years. They oh, every one, three years. They, they used to have it every year. Yeah, well, they have, they've always had it every three years. Oh, really? Okay. But this year they're having it on the very day of the battle, 150 years later, September oh 27th gosh. and 28th. Now, I know for some reason, without thinking, the Foundation for Restoration has their history conference that weekend, but they're not going to get anybody there because everybody's going to be going to Fort Davidson. Yeah. It's one. It's a hundred. It's one of the probably the premier battles of uh, in in our in our in area. area, and it's the 150th anniversary. And it, and I work over there once in a while, but they're expecting maybe around 1,400 to 1,500 reenactors. Oh my gosh! And that's the ones that we know of, because you always have more to show. But it's going to be one of the largest reenactments at that fort. Oh we're gosh. thinking we're going to have close to as many participants as the Confederates that were killed at that battle. Yeah, anybody that goes yeah, to Atlanta should not there. miss that till a walk. Did you go see that uh, cyclorama in Atlanta? The what? The cyclorama in Atlanta? Oh, huh. uh, you missed it. That's better yet. Is it? Yes, ma'am. Well, get talk to, about the picture a little bit, and then I'll oh, shut good. up. Okay. This here is a picture of the Grand Army of the Republic Post here in town, and it was called the uh, J. Felix St. James Post, named after a lieutenant colonel who was kill, killed at the Battle of Shiloh. He was from St. Genevieve, and he was a lieutenant colonel in the 13th Missouri Infantry. But anyway, back in here, can't really see it, but there's a buggy with his widow in it, and these there's a wagon right here, and this is taken from the balcony of the Southern Hotel, second story balcony, and is is taken down in down Third Street, and uh, this here's the Union Hall down here. It used to be uh, Rosier's Market, mm -hmm. but, but but and here's the old brick. But these guys right in here are all Civil War veterans, and uh, they, they, they're, some of them are carrying flowers. And this, this is on Decoration Day, 1888, May 30th, and that was proclaimed by uh, Major uh, General John A. Logan, and that we would absorb, absorb, observe uh, Decoration Day every year on May 30th, but now we've changed it to Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. But these guys, you know, some of them are getting up there, and they're marching towards the uh, Memorial Cemetery, and then from there, and I think it was pretty new back then, but I think uh, Valley Springs was pretty new in 1888. They marched over there, too. They went there, too. Later on in life, in the 1920s and stuff, there was less and less of them, and we have found, in, well, Bob Mueller has found in, in the newspaper where they took them by car. You know, they were getting a little too oh. to walk around. This is a grave marker, and uh, this one I bought on eBay. Uh, you know, but it's it's the Grand Army, of the Republic. That was their emblem, like right here. This was their badge. Copy the other badge. But this is like the kind of like the VFW and the American Legion have the same kind of concept. But this one dates back to around the 1870s, 1880s. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, but I just heard again. I heard today where. They're just, they, the VFW American Legion put things like this up and people are just stealing them, you know, and, you But know, I've I, never seen that, and they're down, my parents are down in Perryville, no. and there's gobs of veterans buried there, but I've never mm -hmm. seen that. Well, I mean, you can tell where they're at because they put the flags out there. Well, this is the Grand Army of the Republic, one mm -hmm. here, so. Mm -hmm. 
Mom's Doesn't darn. the American Legion still do that with a little, That's yeah, a little marker? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. what he said, they're stealing oh. them. They're stealing yeah. them. Uh, but our group here in town, we have uh, compiled a list of, uh, we have over 850 names here of St. Genevieve County uh, veterans who fought in the Civil War. Oh my goodness. And we are uh, doing other things, like we're, we're doing a book here. I'm trying to find it. We're trying to find out information on. What am I? Where is he at? We are doing Confederate and Union. This is Charles Beal. It's a we're doing information sheets like that on them on other guys. Oh, where is he at? Oh, that's I lost great. Oh, here he is over here. I have his own book. But this here is one that's specifically the ones we know of the that were in the Grand Army, the Republic Post here in town. Can't really see it to give. This is a picture of George Beckerman oh, and his uh, fruit cart. He would ride around town, fruit and vegetable <laughs> wagon on a horse. He, he's he's on a picture on there carrying a carrying his sword. Oh my uh, word! And uh, yes. so it, it was pretty. You know, the veterans they were very active. Uh, the Grand Army of the Republic was probably the first, the largest veterans organization, and they were very political. Like the next. First, the five presidents after the Civil War were all Civil War generals, and they were pretty much Republicans because the Grand Army of the Republic, pretty much the Union veterans were Republicans. And so, I just got a couple other things I'd like to show you. If you don't, if you got a couple minutes, I know we all. We got all the time in the world. <laughs> oh, yeah. We have time for you. And if we run out of time, we can always have you back next three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this kind of stuff is really interesting. Well, this yes, here is, is a picture of, uh, uh, this here is a picture, of, right here is uh, George Beckerman. This is a picture of taking over here in front of us. If you hold it out that way, you can probably zoom in on it. Well, what way? Like you, like you are. You can point to it. Okay. You know. Well, this here is, uh, this here is George Beckerman. You, you see, he's still me. holding that sword. Isn't that cute? And uh, this guy back here. Is Frank Huck? Huck. Huck. Mm -hmm. Bobby Hook? Hook? Is it Hook? Hook or Huck? Yeah. Yeah. Frank Hook. And I think. This anyway, was beard. Anybody carrying the flag or the sword were Civil War veterans, part oh. of the Grand Army, the Republic Post here oh in town. Gosh. And these guys are all, the young guys are all getting ready to go off to World War I, off to their, oh they're leaving, goodness. they're getting ready to leave the bus to go to. They're stationed to start training to go fight in World War One. Oh my and the Grand Army, and there's, I found them down at the Foundation, uh, yeah, Foundation uh, the Mecker Library, and mm -hmm. there's just tons of pictures, like not tons, but several pictures. And uh, it's really neat because it, every one of those pictures, there's at least three or four members of the Grand Army of the Republic there to send them off. You know, they're, because a lot of them was there like children and grandchildren or something, but at least, you know, relatives. Mm -hmm. And they were, and they were, this is their way of honoring them for going off to serve their country. And they always had a sword or a flag? They all, somebody was always carrying that sword or that flag. Side. How we doing? Or the flags. And, and they mm -hmm. were always, and all, it was all, all the pictures, it was the GAR guys. Uh, here's another one. And, you know, and there's a bunch of guys here, but it, it shows, there's, oh there's a, uh, Frank Hook here, and he's the one holding the sword this time. Um, mm -hmm. But what we'd like to do, and we and I've been and I found in the in the in the newspaper, I think it's uh, in the library. They had a list of all the guys and the date, and so I've kind of matched the pictures with the list of names, the date of the picture with the list of names. Oh my goodness! And so my hope is that we can get. Because the hundredth anniversary of, the, of World War One is this year, but our participation doesn't really take place about 1917. So I'm hoping that we get where we can have pictures where we know every one of these guys because we have their names. But you know, it just okay, and who's who? who's probably who's who. still relatives mm -hmm. around. Yeah, because there's got to be at least I think 50 or some odd young men in this picture, oh, I bet. and about. Four or five GAR members getting ready. Where was that taken at? Where were they standing at? And right in front of the church. 
Oh, well, okay. Right on, like yeah, because the church steps. was the main yeah. place in town. And they're getting ready to get on the bus. I mean, if you look real close, you'll see they got their little tags on there. The guys got their tags that are getting ready to leave. They got their tags on there. On Can you the read the names on them with a magnifying glass? No. no. Yeah. I'm not even, yeah. I, I've tried. Mm -hmm. Like this one here is dated July 26, 1918. So by going through the, the newspaper in the... You can match up from the, the names. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I have no idea who's who. Yeah. Know, but. Yeah, because they probably didn't list them in yeah, order like they, they just, do now. They yeah, just put the names out. Put the names out. They just listed who was leaving to go to, like, whatever fort they were being sent to. That star, was that in the first war? No, that's a that's the Grand Civil Army of the okay, Republic. That's the Grand Army. Okay. Yeah, that's the Civil War. What the what they would do? Because there's something I'm trying to think that I, I swear that there's stars like that on my great uncle. Oh, there are. I mean, there's stars just like I mean, that. American because Legion. Because it's uh, it's um, yeah, because he died in where's he at? He's in World War. He died in World War One. Yeah, there's 1919. There's, American Legion does that. Uh, BFW has yeah, the same kind of thing. Yeah, it's a big thing, and that star is huge. Yeah. But those sure. old ones you said are. This one they here's stole old. Old. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's for that one there. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't, I've never seen that before down in Perryville. Yeah. You know, on the grave. I went to a cemetery <laughs> one time. I wrote a book about the 31st Missouri Infantry. And uh, so during the Civil War, so I was, I was looking for their. their uh, Graves, and I found an old cemetery up by Belgrade that had like three or four of these oh, still really? on the still on the grave. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. you know. Now that's up by Park Did Hill you have ancestors Belgrade? in the uh, Grand Army of the Republic? Not in the Grand Army of the Republic. No, we were. I guess my family was too cheap to pay the dues. <laughs> I just wondered if that's why you had the, the interest. You don't say they were cheap. They probably didn't have it. They did not have it, no. But I'm just saying, you know, it's just, they, my, they were kind of cheap, too. You know, but, but, uh, here's, I just brought this along. Here's a, uh, this is the book I wrote, but this is my great-great-grandfather. Oh, my. And uh, he was 21 when he went in. He was six foot tall. And uh, this picture of him on the back, and he was 80, almost 85 then. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but he was six foot tall. And I was, when I was doing research on the, on the book, he was in Company F of the 31st Infantry. Well, Company F sometimes is in the middle of the formation. Well, the, the division they were in, they were marching in northern Georgia in the middle of the night, and they got lost. In other words, the column went to the left, and they just kept going straight. So they marched about eight miles, and they're out in the middle of the night in the middle of enemy territory. And there's, you know, probably around eight or nine, well, probably around 7,000 people, but, you know, they were pretty well safe. But they turned around, and when they turned around, I found where the assistant surgeon from this regiment said that a tall guy in the middle of the column or in the middle of the regiment and at the time, there was around 240 guys in the regiment that are still alive. They said a tall guy in the middle of the regiment started making rooster noises in the beautiful baritone voice. So I always like to consider that, that my ancestor. Because <laughs> he was six foot and Company F is kind of in the middle yeah. of the regiment in, in the proper formation. <coughs> well, do you all have any questions for me? Sure. We do. Uh, we are going to participate. The, the, our, our Civil War, our Sons of Union Veterans Civil War group, we do every year on Memorial Day, we do something over here in Memorial Cemetery. We have a little ceremony. We did that Monday. Uh, but uh, this, this on, uh, for the French Festival, we're going to set up out at the courthouse. And we're going to be there, you know, trying to... Uh, educate kids or whoever wants to learn anything about the Civil War. We're going to be in uniform and we'll have wooden rifles and we'll, oh, you know, wonderful. any kids come by, we'll put them through the drill and, and stuff. And we're going to have like a little scenario, kind of like we did for the 200th anniversary of the founding of uh, San Genevieve County. That's very good. Well, thank, thank you. That, you're that, welcome. Yeah, tell you, you all that is so that's so fascinating. Yeah, very interesting. Well, this, this picture will never Bob Mueller 
told me, he says, go look at that picture. I think that's the Grand Iron Public. This is several years ago. And I went in there and looked, and I thought, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, all right. I went in there and looked, and I started looking at their badges on their coats. I go, it is, man. So anyway, I asked Bill, I said, do you sell me that? He goes, yeah, I'll sell that to you. So, yeah, because I can make another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those yeah, are neat. Really Thank awesome. you very much. Thank well, we're glad you. you came. We finally yeah. made connections. We yeah. tried last year. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Yeah, but we kept coming up with Bob Mueller. You kept coming up with Bob Mueller? No, I called you, remember? Yeah. Yes, I did. We were, Mary and I worked with the Lawnas at our church on Wednesday uh -huh. nights, and so that's, yeah. that't why we came. Right. That's yeah. why you mm -hmm. Well, that's key. That is neat. That it's very, cool. very interesting. Well, I, I think you and Bob Mueller really have good programs. I mean, well, when you talk, you really have good programs. Bob's a lot smarter than me. Oh. He's got a college education. <laughs> well, that doesn't really mean that. I <laughs> love them yeah. trees <laughs> going yeah. down there. Aren't they something right uh -huh. here in the courthouse? Yeah. 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 yeah, and you know what? It's funny because now they got the trees growing down there. It's eyeball uh -huh. again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well they probably need shade to sit under because they... Some of them weren't even working, you know, and during the day they just went and sat around. Yeah, I don't and know. visited with their with the people in town. What do you mean they weren't working? Those old men weren't working; they were all retired. Those old men probably were sitting on their front porches. <laughs> I, I, they had benches in the in the courtyard. Well, see see them back there. <laughs> here's the flag, American flag, uh -huh. and it's and it's on a wire strung from the what's now what? the old brick. Clear over it right across the. Mm -hmm. Now, is that flag oh, hanging off of the jail? No, that flag no, hanging on that wire. wire. There's it's a wire. wire. Oh, there's a wire across. It goes all the way from the old, with the candle, with South Candle. Oh, okay. Candle. <laughs> Excuse me, candle. Over to the, to the old, old Oh, okay. Or what is now the old bridge. Yeah. I wonder if they got permission from the city to do that. I bet <laughs> landmarks wouldn't let them do it. <laughs> they probably got fined. Yeah, they probably got a temporary <laughs> Probably. Get it down. Or they got fined for it. They paid fine. You got a lot of papers here, Chip. <laughs> you got a lot of papers here. Yeah. Oh, I man. wonder if they didn't have bars on the on the jail at that time, or if they had the shutters over the bars to keep the rain out. Oh. Probably they didn't can't. have windows. They didn't in have it. mean ones in. Oh, I don't know. They used to kill each other on the street. Oh, yeah, it was in the paper. I saw. I read some old papers, and there was duels out in the street right there. Yeah. Yeah. Some guy got killed. Yeah, the Herald and. Uh, and fair play, they really yeah. had some good articles. Yeah, they did. <laughs> that street looks wider. Doesn't it? Though? That's what I thought. But maybe it's the sidewalks. You well, know? They don't have any sidewalks. No, I, that's what yeah, I mean. They're right up the to the building. On it made mm -hmm. it the, the horse cart. So I think that's maybe why they put them trees there, so the judges could come out of the <laughs> come out of the courthouse. And look and run real quick. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that little it wouldn't get run down by a yeah, horse in a buggy. Yeah. <laughs> and the short could hide behind one of the trees and shoot people. <laughs> That'd be a skinned person. Yeah. 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 yeah, because that was all open in between the jail and the courthouse then. You know, because that addition wasn't there. Yeah. So you could go from one street to the other. I didn't oh, realize that the Rosier building was that tall. Uh, it burned down in the 1920s. But when was this picture taken? 1888. This building here was called the Union Hall. Okay. And uh, a guy named, I can't think of his first name, but Seabird owned it. I think it was Henry Seabird owned it. And he had a tavern. You'll see the Limp Mansion sign right here wrapped around the corner. There's another one right there. And then he had the Union Hall. I remember Hall. a Seabird having a tavern. Remember yeah, Seabird's that was a chest. Yeah, no, and yeah. Oh, and there was another talking, one. that was a um, there was another one too. But that might have been ancestors of his. Yeah. You know. yeah it might have been. And so when that burned down, they rebuilt the building, and that's when the Rochers and I think the, so, my, yeah. oh. It was in the Audubon. 1920s. Audubon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rochers and who? Audubon. No, Audubon. They're down at the other corner. Down there. And, um, yeah, it's the Hotel Sergeant. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. wasn't there somebody else with them? Or I were Yokers with them at that time oh, or not? Right. Oh. Uh, yeah. What is that? I don't know if Yokers was with them at that time or not. He, 
some of these gals out there are nutrition center or some of this stuff. I know. So that is the old, old building that went burned down. They yeah. rebuilt it yeah, and they made a two story building. That's why yeah. it's not okay. as tall. Yeah. Well, this is pretty tall. I mean, yeah. You look at yeah, it. that's why I yeah. say it. It's about three stories. It's that's taller than the one that's yeah. down now. Mm -hmm. And you see, there's. Okay. There's like a white house right behind I you. remember that. Do you? They tore that house down. The lumber yard was in between that house and the corner. Yeah. And they tore that house down when, you remember that white house being there? I vaguely yeah. remember Yeah, remember the lumber yard was yeah. in between and then the house was on the corner. But I can't remember who lived there. But it was Wiener's Yummy Yard. Wiener's <laughs> Lumber Yard. <laughs> yeah, and the corner house, but I don't remember who lived there. Klein's lived across the street when we went at that the time I'm talking about. But I don't remember who lived in that White House. But I guess it was sold when they died and Wiener sold the property. Yeah, they, to, yeah, they sold that and, and they made a parking lot out of it when they closed up the parking lot. I guess uh, when he died. Is that when they? I think so. They closed the lumber yard when he died. That was very interesting. Oh, mm -hmm. Gary. That was probably in the 50s or early 60s. And then the lumber yard, well, that was a different lumber yard that was down Main Street, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it's really a unique picture because you have, that uh, is. That's really you have like little African American kids down here and just the whole community. I mean, like the, a band was there and all these children. Probably there. everybody in town was there. Yeah, yeah. It was a holiday. Like you didn't have anything else to do. Well, Bob Mueller said in his research, he found out where they used to do, uh, have big parades and everything. Big, have what? Big parades, parades. and everything. Oh, you know what? When, when. Uh, on Memorial Day in our office. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. They used to when I was a well, kid. Well, Rosiers, they had tough nut day. Well, yeah. Oh, my gosh. The streets were. Well, they closed You, you couldn't even the see streets. it. Yeah, they closed the street. There were people they everywhere. They tough nut. Uh, pocket knives. Pocket knives away and, and tough nut jeans. jeans and, yeah. Hmm. It was something else. The whole town was there. I mean, you, you, you went there to get all that free stuff. Uh, that's way before my time. <laughs> yeah, it would be. He, he's old, young enough to be my kid. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like it, does he? <laughs> no, you just don't look old enough. Oh, <laughs> <God. laughs> Okay, Chip, let's see what you got to okay. talk about. Well, thank you, Gary. For thank you, Gary. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Anytime you want to come and talk about right. it, you feel free to come. All right, That's thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. It's going to be hard to follow you, Gary. I don't have nothing that interesting. Yeah. <laughs> sure you do. Yeah, we have a good event. Mm -hmm. You're doing yeah. a nice charity thing yeah. here. Well, we're going for our fifth year, and so far four out of the fifth it Hopefully rains. it rains. So it it won't rain this time, I mean, because last year it rained so much that we had to cancel a lot of our pro stuff that went on. Yeah. So hopefully this year we won't have that. But we are doing the same as before with additional items, too. Um, the day is June 7th, which is lucky enough that it's before your all's activities, and I don't think there's anything else going on in St. Genevieve, so it would be a perfect opportunity to bring a lot of people out. Um, I guess if you want me just to kind of go through the day of events. Sure, that's okay. fine. Mm -hmm. um, the day, actually, what we're doing here is to raise money for two great causes. Uh, one is for Down syndrome. My son has uh, Down syndrome, Andrew. And part of the funds are going to go to the St. Louis Association for Downs to help fund research to ha uh, help people with Downs. The other part is going to our... Um, challenger baseball field and i don't know if everybody knows it or not but if you go out behind the community center you'll see it in uh, full swing i mean here shortly we'll be able to put the gravel down and put the astroturf on so hopefully later this year we'll be able to actually play ball on there um, and if you ever want to see something unique and rewarding and just to see how what St. Jen can do for people with disabilities go up to St. Jen football field on a Saturday morning at nine o'clock Luckily enough, the St. Jen uh, School is letting us use their football field right now to actually play baseball on. We've got 60 plus clients up there ranging from probably in the five to six up to 62. Some, one is blind, one's electric chair, walkers. I mean, it's tremendous to see what you, what's going on with the St. Jen. Oh my gosh, and they do that every Saturday up at St. Jen? Every Saturday right now up at St. Jen. We were lucky enough to, it is, and it's it's an eye opener, and it's what's neat is that these people with a disability in St. Genevieve is getting an opportunity to be able to be 
an enorm, enorm, I guess right. you would say. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of the stuff, and I could talk for hours on the Senate Bill 40 and what we've got going on out there, but what we're trying to do is we're raising money to help those organizations. With uh, the start of the day on uh, June 7th, we're going to have the bicycle ride, and it starts at 9 o'clock. It's a two-mile fun ride if you want to be with uh, a family and ride from the KC Hall down through Historic St. Jen up to the river and back, or you can go all the way up to a 50-mile bike ride. So depending upon what kind of enthusiast you are, you could do any of those. When you get back from the bike ride, usually by 11 o'clock, we have all the other activities starting. Um, when 11 I said, in the evening? No, 11 <laughs> in the evening? That's you riding the bike. After that 50 miles, maybe <laughs> three days for me. <laughs> now, we could get you on a no, bicycle. we're not going to do that. We tried that last We time. did. We tried. We tried. Yeah. And see, I've got something for all three of you guys to participate in, oh. and that was going to be yours. You were going to be the bicyclist. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we didn't get a trike. It's a, it's a trike. A trike? Yep. <laughs> Electric one? <laughs> um, but whenever they get back from the bike ride we have the about 11 o'clock is when everything else pretty well starts kicking off and when i say that uh, there's bouncing houses and kid games which is all donated by local organizations um, there's clowns with face painting which is the kc's is involved with that world bird sanctuary with stormy crawford uh, we've got the um, uh, the conservation department with their live animals. We've got sheriff department that's going to be there with uh, their fingerprinting. Live animals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't know if Hopefully, some there. of them are watching, so we can get you in trouble tonight. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Good thing you know them all. Uh, you know, you maybe know we should all. videotape you and get fingerprinted just in case somebody would steal you. We do also have, um, oh, now you got me off kilter here. Uh, got Smokey the Bear. Oh, now, wait a minute. You said something there. How do you say him? Smokey the Bear. Smokey, Smokey the Bear or Smokey Bear? Smokey the Bear. Smokey the Bear, uh, I said. You guys are going to get in trouble because I got in trouble. Oh, wait a minute. You're supposed his to cross name, out the... His middle name is not the. He's Smokey Bear. Okay, yeah, so, so you got to cross see, out got, the... I'm in trouble. I, I put Smokey the Bear and... Out, the, the bear got a hold of me and told me that his name is not Doug. Oh, his middle name is not Doug. Nope. It's just Smokey Bear. You can, ask her, you can Smokey actually bear. ask. I'm coming down and giving that bear a look. <laughs> <laughs> Along with Smokey Bear, we do have the Challenger baseball uh, mascot that's going to be running around there also. Um, with that going on, we do have the Antique Tractors, which is uh, put on with from... Uh, Oh, if you flip to a flyer here, we've got numerous flyers for all the different things going on, but the Antique Tractor Show is put on with uh, Lost Acres Tractor Club, and what they're going to do, and it's something that I think is really neat that they put on, besides the tractor show, and they do, and I think I brought this up before, they do a parade, because a lot of these tractors, like the ones you even see that's the toy tractors here, is tractors that elderly people used to use many years ago. Mm -hmm on the farm <laughs> and some of these elderly people is in rest homes now so what they do they actually they bring them out to see it <laughs> you got it they actually cruise through st genevieve to all the rest homes and then go back down to the kc hall <laughs> one thing different that they're going to do this year to make it a little bit more interesting is they're going to have prizes for they actually call them tractor games so they're actually going to be doing a balance beam with the tractor you actually drive a tractor up onto a platform and you have to Pull it up on there and stabilize it the quickest, or there's chain in a box. There's a, a device that you actually use a chain on to a tractor and get it put it into a box. And then there's something with the fish. They've got all kinds of neat activities going on. Uh -huh. So that's kind of unique this year, along with there is going to be like uh, you've seen at uh, Heritage Days, which is a tremendous thing that goes on. They have a lot of uh, two cylinder engines with different mm -hmm. things going on. We had a, one of the family's child that has a, a disability got to run the the corn chucker and crush corn and his family would just was uh, with awe over it all and he actually got to take some of that product home last year to feed it to his birds so there's more of that even going on this year so that's kind of neat that's happening um, we also are having besides the the bicycle thing of course uh, co-ed volleyball um, so 
You're the young lady that's having a birthday right around now, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <that's laughs> I just did. Well, there you go. <laughs> but it's a co-ed volleyball. Last year it was very unique because that was one of the things that did participate on, and instead of a normal volleyball, turned into mud volleyball, and it was a very good fundraiser. I bet, that was I bet fun. it was fun. It, it was fun. Though. It was fun because you know, oddly enough, they did two hundred thirty-eight dollars to throw me in. And oh, I think I believe it. <laughs> and my wife even got sixty dollars just for a handprint on her tail. So it was all for a good cause. We raised good money that way. So we had that going on. Um, another thing we're doing something different in Iris. This is something that I should have probably talked to Dave to first. But it's we're trying something different with a cruise in. And what that is is for people that's got a car, truck, motorcycle, anything, like your hubby can take you out in your convertible that day, cruise around town, then go down there and take you out to a nice romantic chicken dinner with all the fixings and <laughs> park his car up there and show it off for half. Right? I will tell him that you said that. There you go. That, Do you want the Chevy or the Mercury? Well, see. <laughs> no, you need <laughs> to drive one. <laughs> there you go. Just, you need to drive one. You need to come down, though, because we're going to have to videotape this three-wheel bicycle, because by the time you get down there, she might be making it back on the two-mile ride. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and then you have your good chicken dinner all the time. Yeah, the KC's is going to be putting on their tremendous chicken dinner from 11 to actually 7 that night. We, we do have... Uh, the capability and if you are homebound please call we can have it delivered for no additional charge um it will be the normal casey chicken dinner with the uh, liver dumplings mashed they potatoes they charge and all. seven not eight or they charge i think it's eight or eight fifty mm -hmm. yep, yep we are having that on the inside on the outside we're going to have uh pork burgers french fries uh popcorn all the normal uh fun carnival type food if you want to funnel call it that. Cakes. Pardon me? Funnel cakes. We're not going to do funnel cakes this time. We're going to do french fries. The funnel oh. cakes didn't go over as good last time, so you didn't show up to eat some, so we yeah, have to well. go with french fries. <laughs> <laughs> Probably everybody's weight conscious now, and that makes yes. a difference. Mm, yeah, that mm -hmm. could be. There's some of us that don't care. Yeah, I'll come after the party. <laughs> i got to go to that party first. Uh, we are having a, in, under one of the large tents, we have a silent auction that's going to be going on. That silent auction starts actually at 11 and goes throughout the day. And then at the end of the evening, we usually have the raffle tickets pulled. Uh, just, we've got probably, well, we've got probably close to 160 different companies that's been donating to the cause, which is tremendous. But just to give you an example, you've seen the bears that's down at uh, Jertafet, the chainsaw bears. Mm -hmm. We've got a chainsaw bear. We've got uh, wine and cheese baskets. We've got, uh, say, $100 private wine and cheese tasting at one of the wineries. We got that last year, and our class went, and we had so much fun. You probably walked away just about tipsy, though, too, because the one I went on. <laughs> well, we were dumping a lot of it for that purpose, <laughs> but the ones that didn't drive were drinking. Sure. It's a lot of fun. It that really was. Is. It was wonderful. He's mm -hmm. very good. It very, was very Cave good. again? Mm -hmm. it, yes. Yeah, he's yeah. very good. Cave Winery is yeah. doing a tremendous job on that. Um, some of the rock quarries are given loads of rock. Uh, we've got cardinal tickets. We've got uh, cardinal signs uh, and different. Just, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. We're not saying no to any donations then, too. If you guys all have somebody or know somebody that wants to donate something, we still are going to be adding to the silent auction list. So that will be going on throughout the day. Uh, we've got numerous race cars if you're a Donnie Klein fan. We've got four or five of his cars. Uh, we've got numerous other race cars that's going to be bringing their stock cars down. Chris Kurtz is bringing his, uh, uh, yeah, a handful of his World War II stuff. Yeah. And, you know, you're talking about the Sheriff's Department stuff. They've got a new toy this year, and they're going to have it on display, so you need to come down and check it out. Um, it's something that they actually put in for, and the government was lucky enough to pick us for being able to get this, this unit for, for our facility. Um, I mean, they're gonna have snakes here again. Oh yeah, yeah. They're, the kids well, really like the snakes. And what's odd, uh, Chikowski that has the conservation or is the conservationist in town. Snakes. A I lot of those down. animals live in or around his house, and it's hilarious because right. his kids. 
Oh my gosh. Have them and bring them in and, and show them off, which is it's really, really neat. Oh, I won't be there. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, that table I with like the snakes table. last year was like full all the time. Oh, oh Lord. Sure. His husband has a car. He probably won't drink. That so. would be tremendous. I um, take these and put them in our shop. Now you the, haven't talked about the chances. Yeah, we got the, the large raffle. This is going on. Actually, they're selling them right now at Country Mart. We will be out at Overly Meats on Saturday. Uh, we've got a 55-inch LED flat screen for top prize. We got a uh, Samsung Gal Galaxy tablet, our uh, $100 worth of cash. So there's a lot of these raffles out there if you want to participate. And what's the price on those? A dollar a piece or six for five. five. Pass um, this down thing. We do have the. I'll drop them off at your. At the store. Uh -huh. Okay. Is that okay. Oh yeah, that's tremendous. The Rams cheerleaders are going to be there this year again. They're going to be the ones that's going to be giving out the uh, uh, prizes and stuff throughout the day. Tell them I can't make it. I got my outfit. You could be one of them. I can't make it. <laughs> we actually checked into trying to get some of the St. Gen ones this year, and unfortunately there's not going to be any St. Gen ones this year, so we don't know who we're going to be receiving yet as uh, Rams cheerleaders. So we'll have to see how that all turns out. Um, i trying to think, oh, uh, one thing that's really neat, if you haven't seen them or you haven't uh, been around them, you need to come in and see the St. Jen Stompers, which is the cloggers oh in town. Oh, my God, they're wonderful. Yeah. Tremendous. I, oh. My <laughs> girls and my wife, Joy oddly enough, Bradley. joined this year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they are tremendous. Uh, they're going to be performing right around the five o'clock range inside the hall so the people actually after church if they're going to eat they'll have a performance and stuff there and they just totally amaze me because they can dance and dance and dance and dance and dance they just do a tremendous why job why don't you get up there and try it i tell you what you come up there with me and we'll both win. <laughs> we're going to get a competition going yet one of these times you always say you won't come down <laughs> see iris is going to come in her car in his car so now we're going to have to see what the other two young ladies want to bring along we could get two tricycle bikes too if you really want to. i used to go to a graduation party now my grandson graduated well that's good so i have to go to his party saturday and so. i have to be there too <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I have to be there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be disappointed if you wouldn't. <laughs> you got an excuse every time. I do. That's what I need to do is know. we need to show up at your house at 530 when we're actually setting up some of that in the morning and get you before you leave. Hello. What time's your party? Is, uh, uh, is the farmer's market going to be down here? Yes, the farmer's market is still going to so be there. So you can come. You can come. So see, you can come buy something. See, I'm yeah. down there at farmer's market before they open every Saturday. Mm. She's one of those who get first. the best of everything. <laughs> I get my fresh eggs. I, I, I got a ball and chain. She's not going to leave that morning. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to kidnap her. You're until gonna... 2 o'clock. That's when her party starts. Put me my little horsey tricycle down. <laughs> <laughs> But truthfully, the day of events, if you can, if you, it is a free event, kind of like you were saying with the, yeah. the Art Guild. I mean, when you get down there, you know, there is going to be food to buy. There's going to be uh, raffle tickets and a lot of things. But the Antique Tractor Club puts it all on for free. So you can come down and see all the tractors, all the games for free. You can pretty well go around and, and see it all for, for free. But it is for a cause. So we do hopefully everybody will come down there with an open pocketbook and, and buy some chances or... You know, if you do have an, an old item in the house that you want to show off, you can bring them down. We <laughs> can even bring a lawn chair or something. Because it is, you can bring... And just sit there. Right? <laughs> there you go. Well, there again, we could do something. Just sit oh, there yeah. and bring <laughs> them What do you bid? Yeah. What do you think? If they pay two fifty for him, hard tell them what you bring. Oh, I know. That's true. This I could be a heck of a money. I could be a heck of a fundraiser. Uh, uh. Oh, God. Oh, so you got the CMO Sundancers too? Uh, that's they unfortunately they had to cancel on oh, us. They had a, something okay. that came up, so they won't be able okay. to participate. Oh. So unfortunately, they are going to be one of the things that's not going to. And the uh, Sean tours, oddly enough, the singers with 
my three kids and there's only two others right now that's participating in the other families out of town so we're going to just go ahead and have uh them not sing that night and they're going to all participate in the, oh, the okay. clogger so they won't be there either they'll be dancing correct they'll be doing the dancing instead Okay. So you have a really full day going. That's good. Yes. And please come down. I mean, this it all started off as a, a fun get together with a handful of us to drink some drinks and uh, talk about this and it turned into something like this. And if we can keep it going, we hope to, because as long as we get everybody to, to oh come down and enjoy the day. These yeah. kids are it's a it's a very, very worthy cause. It is. Oh, yeah. sure. it's, it is. it's a challenge. That's why I've never been sorry that I ever there ever started that workshop because I was on the first board that got there. Oh, that that's is it's tremendous. A, that's been a blessing. It is. Yep, yep. It sure is. Because when those kids get that check, you think they have a million dollars in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's hard to believe when you go to the shelter workshop. Okay, they got the ice plant, mm -hmm. and they take turns working the ice truck. Mm -hmm. And it would be like they got a million dollars to work the ice truck, which they do work. Oh, they, do. they don't just sit well, around. Yeah, and that's and they not are an easy proud. job. Oh, yes. yeah. Yep, yep, which They're is tremendous. They're proud of every job they do. Mm -hmm. That's why we, as human beings, need to sit back and look at them and don't worry about the little bump on the head that's or whatever exactly right. and quit whining and crying about stuff because we don't have it bad at all. No, that's exactly it's only by right. the grace of God that you're not that way. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I want to thank everybody in St. Genevieve 100% because without St. Genevieve being the way they are, we couldn't all do what we do for great causes because they do come out. They with do. The, oh, you know, very good. St. Genevieve's wonderful for supporting things. Yep, yep. Okay. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, Chip. Sure thing, ladies. Yeah. Hopefully, you all have a good one. You too. Yeah, yeah. Lance. What's up? Okay, Lance. Okay, Lance. <laughs> let's have it. Well, speaking of support. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess two weeks ago, I went out to Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, went to the seminar with Dabakita, the athlete from Africa, who is a two-time Olympian, two-time world champion, and uh, Master Ramey from Kentucky Taekwondo is trying to rehab uh, Mr. Daba's knee to get him back in the, uh, the Taekwondo circuit and stuff for to get him ready for the Olympics in 2016. So, uh, Master Ramey and Daba and I are put together a corporate sponsor packet to uh, help us out with our goal to get to the Olympics in a year and a half. And this fall, there are some tournaments coming up in Serbia, Australia, Mexico, and Costa Rica that Daba needs to attend to gain points to qualify for different tournaments to get to the Olympics. So <clears throat> I put together this big corporate sponsor packet thing and I'm just I'm going to go around to St. Jen different businesses and stuff and see if anybody around this area will want to get involved with a Olympic uh, sponsorship thing. So. And if somebody does, I mean, uh, Daba will like will have their logo on the back of like his warm-up suit and stuff like that when we travel and stuff too. So, uh, do we know him? him? It's real, yeah. If I if we work all this out, yeah. So it's really exciting for me yes. to, to to get the opportunity to possibly get to go. So I'm I was all pumped up. I was talking to him the other day about it out in the driveway and. Uh, it even kind of gives me goosebumps, makes the hair raise on my Do we know him, who you're talking about? Uh, Daba Kita, no. But uh, my plan is, is what I what I'd like to do is once summer's over, is maybe bring Daba here into town and bring an Olympian in here and uh, maybe, you know, take some pictures with you girls and stuff. Where is you know. he from? He's from Africa, Mali, Africa. Really? Oh, okay. So I think it'd be cool for the town to... Uh, have an Olympian visit. I'll try to. I'm gonna try to put a seminar together too between my school and the schools in St. Louis that are in USA Taekwondo, and see if we can get that together. Maybe bring him down a Friday night, like maybe before like the football jamboree night or something before it kicks mm -hmm. off, and maybe have like him do a yeah, a little speech about athletics and professionalism. Maybe so. It's all kind of in the 
baby stages right now, but uh, that's my new big goal is to somehow try to get to go along as assistant coach to the Olympics here in a year and a half. So I've been working really hard the last four years and it kind of, after you know, hitting the, the rock over and over and over, then finally I got a crack. So I was excited when I left Louisville the other week. I was all oh, good for you. Stereo cranked, and <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so anyway, if anybody would like to contact me, uh, my phone number is five seven three five one three zero three zero eight, or you can find me always at the community center too, and we can talk about it, or I can email you the information. Are you going to put that on Facebook or something? Uh, I have to talk to Master Remy about that. That's kind of more of his department and oh. stuff, but uh, yeah, so I'm excited. It's pretty cool. You, yeah. So, cool yeah. so if coach. yeah, if I get to be an assistant coach and get to be the guy that you know just helps Daba out, puts his towel behind his neck or whatever, you know. <laughs> that's, I mean, I think it'd be awesome. I'm so excited, you know. So as long as I get to somehow possibly get to go, I mean, that was my dream and goal in the very beginning when I first got into this, the the Olympics of four years ago. So, and who would have thought that it would have actually all kind of in the worked out this together. way so yeah and so I could, that travel like, the weird places you can well travel. that's cool too like I and then through Taekwondo I've done a lot more traveling than I would have normally in the beginning and it's just really kind of cool to meet all different kind of cultures and different yes. people that exactly. I mean because er, I mean, it comes down to everybody's all the same you know it's mm -hmm. but yes. it's, it's you know some people it's don't really right. see it that way but <laughs> I mean you go out and meet everybody else that's different countries and same as you. We're all we're all human, so uh, so it's really cool. It's been a great experience for me, anyway. So it's only benefited me to the max and helped me learn and you know be more, I guess, uh, professional in some things. So so uh, so that's what's going on. Uh, the goal here is what he wrote down is is to raise twenty thousand to get to go to all these tournaments because of. The flights, the room, the supplies, and credentials and stuff. Um, I know, like the Australia one, it's almost two thousand dollars a person just to fly a round trip. That's to, a long flight, too. Yeah, it's a long flight too, and uh, I think it's a fourteen-hour time difference too. We were discussing yeah, jet lag and how it affects the athletes <laughs> oh and stuff too. Yeah. So. I'm not sure how Australia work out, but I would love to go to Australia, though. So that's, it is one of my goals on my list. So hopefully I get to cross it out in the future. So, but yeah, I thought I'd stop in, tell you about the road to Rio, and glad uh, you did. A chance. So. You almost so missed it. Well, I, w I, I had to stay late at work a little bit and close up, and but I hammered down and got here just in the nick of time. Yes, and no ticket. <laughs> Ticket for speed. Oh no, I didn't speed or anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so. Well, thank you all for coming. Yes, all right. thanks, what everyone. do we have coming up? Okay, the next time we only have one scheduled um, at the fair board. So if anybody else knows if anybody wants to be on, we'll come up with other people before then. But that's what we have scheduled. So well, thanks for having us. Join yeah. in. Yeah, thank we're you. always thank glad you to have all any guests and. Thanks so Keep much. everybody informed about what's going on in St. Genevieve. I don't this have my stickers fun. with me. I was going to throw some stickers <laughs> on here real quick. Yeah, it's always interesting, isn't yeah. it? It's <laughs> always <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Are you it's always interesting. <laughs> you are well, welcome. Thank you for coming. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Be just fun. Tickle to death. Yeah. Yeah. One of these days you're going to have to come out and play. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. I play <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I Thank you all for <laughs> joining us. Yes. It was yeah. lovely and a very interesting evening. Yeah, really. Okay. What happened to you last week? I was stuck at the pool. <laughs> <laughs>